Well, the good old Gagan presses got us off to an unbeaten start in this two Bundesliga season today. It's two of our toughest tests so far to see if that can continue. We're in third spot and we take on the two teams above us on the league table. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 54 of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and come up today we lie in third and take on the only two teams above us on the two Bundesliga table. First up we host top of the table Bochum, they just got promoted up from the Free Liga last season and off the back of that we take on an Arminia Bielefeld team who we were in a promotion fight with for most of last season. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but we've only played one game off the back of yesterday's episode of the last two before we did a little bit of business on transfer deadline day and have done a little bit since then as well. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner before we bring you guys the result from that game that we did play against Griffith Firth, albeit you probably saw it just before, in that top right corner. But as we were in the process of doing both those players who were down in our B team, so unfortunately it doesn't show up here on our transfer history, but they did leave the club for around about £90,000 overall. Panzu Ernesto and Alexander Stankovic, those players going to some different regions where the transfer window was still open, so those two have departed the club. It did mean our budget did go up by just a little bit these days, just over that £90,000 mark and also our wage budget. Still a decent chunk left in that at £5,000 a week, but those two players who have been in our team for the last couple of seasons here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, in particular Panzu Ernesto has been here since the first season, are now both out of the club after we did replace them with the likes of Omar Colley as well. As Luca Campanelli, so we got rid of those two players before we did get stuck in to our one game since yesterday's episode off the back of an international break and thankfully kept our unbeaten start to this season here at Lokomotiv Leipzig going with a 2-1 win over Glyfer Firth. Thankfully we were able to keep most of our players on the field for the large majority of this game off the back of most of them having a decent break during that window but as you can see two first half goals there to Krasnicki and Yakuba Solo, both him and Campanelli still performing well enough to keep Cliche and Huxa out of that first team. Griffith Firth did grab a goal back in the second half, but thankfully we did go home with all three points and based on stats, we just about deserve it, albeit it was a very, very even game. So what that means for the two Bundesliga table going in to today's episode, we are in third just above field Tuna Dusseldorf, thanks to our goal differential, but a chance for us today to hopefully jump above one, if not both of these teams that we are going to play, we take on Bochum and Arminia Bielefeld, albeit we're going to have to do that without one of our best players here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, who is off the back of that game against Griffith Firth. Titus Krapikas has knee tendonitis, and he is out for four to five weeks. So that is a significant injury. Also worth noting, AC Milan came in for a loan for him once our transfer window had ended. So obviously we did turn that one down, but that might be a bit of a sign of things to come with Titus Krapikas might be a player who was too good for us here at Lokomotiv Leipzig in these days is wanted by the likes of RB Leipzig Ange can go and do one if he thinks he's going to sign him from under my nose but we're not going to be able to use him for the next month or so due to that need tendonitis so it does mean a significant change to our first choice lineup here at Lokomotiv Leipzig Matas Hasman makes his way into the team albeit did a great job for us when we did get promoted up from the free league a couple of seasons ago but hopefully he will perform in today's episode where we do take on the two teams above us on the two Bundesliga table first up we take on a team who so far have won all six of their games in Bochum they came up from the free league last season we actually played them last season and beat them one of the early rounds of the DFB Pockel so based on that this is a game hopefully at home where we can pick up a win but obviously they have been in great form since coming back up to this division and that includes a recent win over our second opposition in today's episode in Arminia Bielefeld but apart from that these guys also have won all their games just that loss to Bochum so two really tough opposition for us in today's episode but hopefully 
We can pick up results against these guys so far. We have a pretty good record against Arminia Bielefeld, especially since Linus Zimmer joined them last season. And as I said, we did pick up a win over Bochum in the DFB Pockle early on last season. So hopefully, these are two winnable games that might get us inside an automatic promotion spot come the end of today's episode. And we'll come back shortly and get stuck into the first game. It's our home one as we host the table-topping Bochum. And here are the team sheets for the first game of today's episode. Obviously, Hasman and goal in place of the injured Krapakas, but apart from that, it's the same lineup we did in today's episode going with, with both Campanelli and Salue starting. There are Bokum. It's a very defensive formation, which is quite interesting. Five at the back have noted that usually that doesn't work, but obviously that's not been the case with these guys. Hopefully, we can hand them their first loss of the season. And just show the 10 minute mark, the first highlight here is a corner in our favour. We go near post there for Gale, but unfortunately that one can't quite sneak past Corber and Gold, but an encouraging start, still nil all. And we go all the way forward to just shy of the half hour mark for our next highlight. Campanelli there was on the attack, unfortunately lose touch though, and a chance for Bockham to get that ball back, albeit they play it forward, we hit it clear, but now forced to get some behind, good chance now for the opposition. Thankfully that shot goes over the bar, doesn't have to test Hasman. Still locked up at nil all late in the first half, but as you can see, quite an even game, just slightly edging things with a few more shots and shots on target. And that was it for the first half in this first game of today's episode. Not a lot of action, slightly edging things in terms of stats, as I said when we did come back for that second highlight in favour of Bochum, but a decent chance for both teams, neither of them able to put it away. Campanelli is just struggling today on a 6.4, so because of that, we'll bring on Florian Huxa, but I think that's the only change we're going to make here at halftime. We'll just adjust some opposition instructions and give the boys a little bit of motivation, not playing too badly. Hopefully, we can get on the front foot a little bit more in the second half, and we'll get things back underway, locked up at no all. And in fact, there's a highlight here immediately from the kickoff. Osman Tilgan makes his way forward nice and quickly. Terrible tackle there from Haya. I think that might be a red card. Albeit, we're going to have to wait here for a penalty check from VAR, but surely that's going to end up being a red card higher already, trying to run away from the referee before that can happen. It's just outside the box, so no penalty, but indeed he's been summoned, and it's a red card early in the second half, so now a great chance for us here to pick up a result against the so far unbeaten team. We're going to go attacking because of that big advantage as we get the second half underway. And it's taken a little while for us to get the first highlight off the back of that red card to Bochum. Now, unfortunately, we give the ball away there as well with a throw in inside the final third one of their strikers as well. Is on an orange injury. Thankfully, Bullock takes the ball off and we try and play that one over the top for Salue. Bit of helter skelter there just on the edge of the box of the opposition. Thankfully, we get the ball back there through Gal. Loose touch, but thankfully keeps it. Now, Osman Tilgan just loses control there yet again. So it's looking a little bit sloppy here. On an attacking mentality, hopefully we can grab a lead shortly and try and put these guys to bed with that one-man advantage. Krasnicki with a shot. Korber with somewhat of a save, but thankfully Jakuba Salui is there towards the far post. Bundles that one home, and we grab a 1-0 lead. If he didn't score that one, probably be coming off a cliche, because up until then was on a 6.4, but Florian Huxa, good ball there off the bench for Krasnicki. A little bit fortunate, but finds its way through to Salili. Gives us a 1-0 lead, and off the back of that, we'll drop back to positive. And just making our way into the last 20 minutes of this game, obviously we've been on the front foot since they have been down to 10 men, but still only with a 1-0 lead. But with these 20 minutes left, we are going to make a few changes, take off some players who are struggling in terms of match rating. Both our wingers, Davida and Triple B, can come on for them. Also, we'll bring on Coachella off the bench. He is coming back from injury. Some game time for him might be useful. Still 1-0 up. And very shortly off the back of those substitutions, now we have a free kick here in our favour. Unfortunately, that ball has a little bit too much on it. Collie on the edge of the box, though. Now Davida picks out Huxa in a ton of space. Tries to rocket that one. Top right corner, but not quite enough space. It comes off the crossbar. Still 1-0 as we start to get closer to the last 10 minutes. And also, we are just checking some player fitness. And Racine Bullock is down to a red heart. Chaiwa can come on for him with our last substitution. Still 1-0 up against the 10 men of Bochum. And we're just about to enter injury time in this first game of today's episode. Obviously, things changed massively off the back of that very early red card in the second half to Bochum. About 15 minutes off the back of that, we did grab a goal through Salue. To be fair, a little bit disappointed. We haven't put these guys to the sword a little bit more, but we might now Salue. Lovely ball played through there, but unfortunately, the goalkeeper 
comes up with a good save, does Corbis shortly off the back of that. We have a throw in near enough to inside of the final third. So a bit of late pressure coming on here from us to hopefully grab a cushion goal. But nonetheless, we should be holding on here to pick up all three points, especially as Dorenzo takes his sweet, sweet time over this throw in these days. Only 20 seconds left. Hopefully we just control position here and can hold on to pick up three points over the table toppers. I think they'll stay there no matter the result of this game. Quater there goes down trying to milk a penalty. Very Bruno Fernandes like. It's not given but it won't matter. We pick up a 1-0 win based on stats. Definitely deserved that win albeit should have picked it up by a much bigger scoreline. But obviously that red card early in the second half helped us out massively and thankfully we just did enough to make the most of that through that goal to Yakuba Salue on the hour mark and we pick up three more points. We stay unbeaten and in Bochum's run early in this two Bundesliga season and hopefully that will set up a game against Arminia Bielefeld which if we win we can sneak inside that top three. We'll come back shortly and see if we can once again beat the team on top of the table. And we are back for the second game of today's episode. We take on Arminia Bielefeld. These guys have dropped back down to second with Bochum having played their game earlier on this match week. But there they are still. Linus Zimmer can only sit on the bench. Coachella is back for us over Warrington. He can now handle 90 minutes also. Fisher, one of our youngsters, is the left wing option on the bench with Triple B having got injured in that most recent game and not quite having recovered. But hopefully we can pick up a win here and jump above Arminia Bielefeld into an automatic promotion spot. And a very early highlight in this one, just one minute gone as a free kick here to Arminia Bielefeld right on the halfway line. This one away from home, but to be fair, I think last season we picked up wins in both our games against these guys. Hopefully the same occurs today. Good work there from us to win that ball back. Now Krasnicki plays it out to a Tilgan, loses it briefly, gets it back, takes on a shot inside the box, but unfortunately that one goes well over the bar. First highlight in our favour, but it does remain nil all. It looks like some early action in this game. A highlight immediately from the restart and a poor pass there. Quecto nearly gets on the end of that one, but Arminia Bielefeld just keep the ball. Then a poor pass finds Quecto yet again, but he gets robbed of the ball. So it's a bit iffy here at the back from Arminia Bielefeld. Lovely work there, Salue. Bit of a dodgy tackle there on the goalkeeper. Must have got the ball, but he just does enough as the goalkeeper to keep that one from going in the back of the net. But early stages, we're putting some pressure here on the opposition, albeit give the ball away here. And now a chance for Arminia Bielefeld on the counter-attack. Aideen inside the box finds its way to Serra. Thankfully that header comes off the crossbar and it is still nil all coming up to the five minute mark. And in fact, another highlight here. Lots of action. Nice and early. Barra wins that ball back there for the opposition. Plays that one back to Shawls just outside of the box. Huck with a shot and that one just skims the top of the net. And it is still nil all after a couple of early highlights. And I can't catch my breath just yet. There is another one with only seven minutes gone. Lots happening early in this one. Now down the other end for a throw. And Daniel Cueto, very similar chance, also goes over the bar. Still nil all. And I've had a brief chance to get my breath back up to the 12 minute mark now. It's a free kick in favour of Arminia Bielefeld. Andrade gets his head on the end of that one. Yet again, just over the bar so far. Both teams not getting many shots on target. So it remains nil all. And up to the 20 minute marks, so not yet halfway through this first half, but there have been a lot of highlights and good chances for both teams. As I said before, shots on target killing both. But good work there from Salue and now Atilgan does get on the front foot, takes a shot from long range, comes off the crossbar, and Bobak just looks at that one as his defenders clear that one up. And now we are halfway through the first half, lots of highlights, but still somehow nil all. And a bit more of a break until our next highlight in this game, just past the half hour mark, it is a goal kick here in favour. Of Arminia Bielefeld, just one shot on target between the two teams so far in this game, and it was in favour of the home team. Apart from that, very even stats so far in this one, and it is here Arminia Bielefeld on the attack. They float that ball into the mix, so thankfully we hit it away, but yet again, they are on the attack here and have the ball just outside of the box. Schulz plays that one into the mix, so thankfully Dorenzo heads that one back to Hasman, who to be fair, hasn't had much to do in today's episode so far, which is quite good, obviously missing Krapikas. Hopefully that doesn't cost us in the second game of today's episode. But Campanelli, nice run here and plays that one forward for Daniel Cueto. Squares it beautifully for Yakuba Salue. He is on the score sheet. Yet again, his eighth goal of the season. Thibaut Cliche at the moment. Can't find a way back into this first team. And also Campanelli had a big hand 
in this goal. So those two changes we made going into that second game of yesterday's episode, somewhat paying off there. Link up with Queto, who grabs the assist, good finish there from Salue into the bottom left corner. We eventually get a shot on target and make it count and go 1-0 up. And only a few minutes off the back of that first goal, now we are down the other end here for a corner in favour of Arminia Bellafeld. Thankfully, Hasman, even though he is quite a bit shorter than Krapakas, comes out and claims it. Very similar to how he does. Good passing there at the back. Looked a bit iffy there for a moment. But thankfully, we do keep hold of the ball. And now Atilgan tries to play that one over. And a nice header there forward for Salue. This time, though, the goalkeeper comes up with a big save. But starting to get on the front foot late in this first half. Still up by one goal to nil. And just before half time, one more highlight in this action pack first half. It is a free kick here to Arminia Bellafeld. And it was cleared off the line there. I think that might have been from Tom Gale. Not too sure, truth be told. It was pretty quick. And that was the last highlight of an action pack first half. A lot of shots from both teams, but not many on target. And thankfully, we scored our one through Yannick Salue with around about 10 minutes to go in that first half. Osman Tilgan did pick up a yellow card in that first half. Fisher is the natural sub in that position, but Davida can also cover it and is a better player. So we'll bring him on for the second half and just not risk things there with Osman Tilgan. But fairly pleased with that first half, but certainly can play a bit better. Hopefully a few more shots on target. We can extend the lead and jump above these guys and make our way inside that top three. We'll get things back underway with a 1-0 lead. And as can be the case with FM, it's been a lot slower here in the second half, but the first highlight does happen just shy of the last 20 minutes, and we give the ball away there poorly, and now they have a big overlap here in front of goal. So there it's poor pass back there from Gal. Thankfully, their striker somehow misses the target. That was an absolute sitter. Thankfully, goes wide, and we do hold on to our 1-0 lead. Hopefully, this is a bit more settled here from this highlight. Quato back to Davida off the bench, and now Salue drops back nicely to get on the ball. Back there to Davida. He plays that one back to Hasman who does come out of goal, plays it forward. Bit of a poor one, and yet again here, Arminia Bellafeld with a big chance on the counter-attack. Kaloi with a poor touch there. It's a bit scrappy at the back. The ball takes a deflection off the back of Hasman, trying to make a save. Thankfully, we clear that one, but those are a couple of very iffy moments from us there at the back, and it's a good time for us to make some substitutions. Krasnicki and Queto both down two red hearts. We're going to bring on our youngster in Fisher. At left wing, Davida can go back out to his more natural right-hand side. And also Kim will come off the bench for Queto. Hopefully, we settle things down and hold on to our 1-0 lead in these last 20 minutes. And shortly at the back of those most recent substitutions, we are going to make a few more here with 15 minutes left. Have just noticed a few players have gone down to Red Hearts. We're going to take off Campanelli down to Red Heart. Played well today, but for Florian Huxa, just to shore things up yet again defensively. And also, we'll take off Coachella coming back from injury down to Red Heart for Warrington. That's our last sub used. Still 1-0 up with 15 minutes left. And very shortly at the back of those substitutions, we do now have a free kick here just inside of the final third, it is Salue here from a long way out. Let's see if he can grab a double and put the cherry on top of this result for us. Tries to aim this one. Top right corner might have got there, but Bobby comes up with a good save in this highlight. In fact, it is going to continue. Still 1-0 as we hopefully can grab a second goal to put this one to bed and jump above these guys on the table. Make our way into an automatic promotion spot. Fisher might have grabbed a debut assist there. Lovely ball over the top. Squares it for Salue. Just going to wait to see here if he was offside and he wasn't. And Fisher with some immediate impact off the bench, which isn't bad for a player who's only on a yellow heart coming in to this game, having recently played for our under-19s, but gets that ball over the top. Squares it for Salue, who must have just been onside. That one did look a little bit dodgy. We won't see the replay, but there's our second goal, which hopefully makes sure we grab all three points from this one after going 2-0 up. And just making our way inside the last 10 minutes of this game, shortly off the back of grabbing that 2-0 lead. Yet again, we have a throw in here inside of the final third. This time they do interfere, but we track back and get that one through Tom Gale. This time finds a teammate, unlike that very hairy pass across the face of goal earlier. Thankfully, the Arminia Bellafeld striker did miss that one. That pass from Hasman also looked a little bit iffy there for a moment. Thankfully, we do eventually deal with it and keep the ball here, Warrington. Plays that one forward to Sung Bin Kim. Good chance there for Salue, but for some reason passes that one forward to the youngster in Fisher, who in this situation 
definitely offside might have been wanting to return the favour from that previous goal. And unfortunately, he thought it was a crossbar challenge. But we make our way inside the last couple of minutes of this game. Still up by two goals. No late corner here in favour of Arminia Bellafeld, who has certainly had some good chances to get on the score sheet in this game today. There's another one. Big scramble there on the line. Thankfully, Dorenzo will clear that one away. They definitely should have got a goal at some stage during this game. But thankfully, Salue grabbed two goals for us and make sure we do pick up a 2-0 win away from home. And that will be enough for us to go above these guys on the league table. We stay unbeaten. We must be one of very few unbeaten teams now in this division in the early stages of the two Bundesliga season. But mainly, that's going to put us into an automatic promotion spot. And we have played the teams in and around us so far this season. So hopefully we can continue our good form and maybe start to cement a spot inside that top two in the remainder of the first half of the season. But two very good results in today's episode. And it's capped off with a 2-0 win away from home over our Mania Bielefeld. So as I said, two very good results in today's episode. Obviously helped out massively by that early red card in the second half against Bochum, but thankfully we made the most of it. And then we pick up a 2-0 win over Arminia Bielefeld away from home a game, which is very even, thankfully, just a little bit better in front of goal. It does mean we are now only one of two unbeaten teams left in the division, but we are picking up a lot more wins than Augsburg are. And it does mean these days we are just one point behind Bochum on top of the table. But a big gap back to teams like Fortuna Dusseldorf now. Five points, I say a big gap, at least for this stage of the season. Hopefully, we can continue to pick up some good results in our next couple of games and hopefully cement a spot inside that top two before we do head into the winter break in a couple of episodes' time. But I think that will do it for today's episode. Play the two teams above us on the lead table. And we are now inside an automatic promotion spot off the back. Of two wins. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow, and I dare say, if our undefeated run has not come to an end by then, it most definitely will in tomorrow's episode, because we are going to take on Bayern Munich in the second round of the DFB Pockle away from home. I think we're going to lose that, but we'll show you that game anyway, because it will be interesting to see how we fare against the best team in Germany. And I think we'll come back, depending on which team is in a better position, and take on one of Karlsruhe or Heidenheim at the moment. Looks like it might be Heidenheim that will play one of those league games, either side of what will no doubt be a loss as we take on Bayern Munich in the cup away from home. But we'll come back tomorrow, hopefully, going into that cup game. We can still be unbeaten, but as I said, probably won't be the case off the back of that game. But we'll see how we get on against Bayern and as well as that take on one of Karlsruhe and Heidenheim to hopefully keep ourselves near the top of the two Bundesliga tables. So until tomorrow, for those two games, most notably that big one in the cup as we take on Bayern Munich. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.